Today we will go over section 5.1, which is derivatives of exponential functions, which is y equals e to the power of x. In this section, we will study the exponential function y equals e to the power of x and its derivative. And remember, exponential functions are a type of nonlinear model and often represent rapid changes. So a few examples like this graph can be compound interest, population growth, radioactive decay, etc. So what is the number e? It is a special irrational number, just like pi. And it is called natural number or Euler's number. Just like pi having an approximate number, E also has a rational approximation of 2.718. When we look at the properties of y equals e to the power of x, it has the same properties as other exponential functions. So one of these main properties that logarithm function is the inverse of the exponential function. So for example, y equals log 2x is the inverse of y equals 2 to the power of x. Same way, if we apply y um, e to the power of x to y e to the power of x, the inverse would be log e x. For the expression log e x, it can also be written as y ln x and called the natural logarithm function. The inverse of e x e to the power of x is also shown on the graph where we can understand some properties related to each as well. For example, while the domain for y equals e to the power of x includes all real numbers, domain for natural logarithm function includes x being, um, x being bigger than zero, which is the positive values for x. Same thing with the range. y equals e to the power of x um, range has to be bigger than zero. So y has to be bigger than zero positive. But y um, ln x includes all real numbers in terms of range. We can also see y e equals e to the power of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, but y ln x has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So if we do it in a list view, um, you guys can see what we talked about in terms of graph. So when we are taking the derivative of e to the power of x, we realize from some of the properties that the derivative is actually the same. We can prove this by the graph y equals um, e to the power of x. So when we put x as 1 right over here, so we have the function. And if we put x as 1, we can um, see that the corresponding y shows a value of e to the power of 1. Same thing, if I plug in 2 for the x value, I will get the value of e to the power of 2 for y and so on. However, let's say we have a function gx in the place of x. So it's not only e to the power of x now. So we have e to the power of gx. Then the derivative formula changes. It's not the same anymore. It is not simply the same thing for composite functions involved e to the power of x. What we do is we keep it the same as it is. However, take the derivative of gx, bring that down to be multiplied by e um, to the power of gx. So right over here, if you have e to the power of gx, keep this the same and then take the derivative of um, gx. So here is an example to understand this better. So if you were to determine the derivative of e to the power of 3x, so it's not only x anymore, I see that I keep it the same, so I'm taking the derivative. I need to keep e to the power of 3x the same, but then for because my gx is 3x, I need to take the derivative of this. And if you remember um, from the derivative rules, taking the derivative of this will just give you 3 because I know that this x is actually x to the power of 1. If you bring that 1 to the front, you would get 1x and do minus 1 to the power, you would get 0. x to the power of 0 is just 1, so you would end up with 1, which means it's only the constant. So I have 3 as my derivative, which I can multiply over here. And as my answer, I will say 3e e to the power of 3x. So for example, in this question, it wants me to find the derivative of e to the power of x squared minus x. 
which I can see that even though this is GX, then I'm going to give a different name for this to make it easier. So I'm just going to say HX. So this is in the form of E to the power of HX, which I can see I'm going to apply the derivative rule that I learned previously. So I'm going to keep um, HX as it is, X squared minus X, and I'm going to take the derivative of HX first. So H prime X is going to be, if you apply the power rule, bring 2, my power, to the front, I will get 2, keep the x the same, and do minus 1 to the power, which will give you 1, you don't need to write it. This is the same thing I talked before, this is x to the power of 1, which will just give you 1, so it's just minus 1. So now I know I'm going to keep whatever is given the same, so me taking the derivative of gx is going to give me the same thing, so I keep it the same, and then multiply it by whatever the derivative I got over here. So 2x minus 1. So that's it. That's my answer. So for this one, it says, given my function equals to 3e to the power of x squared, determine the derivative of this when plug the negative 1 for the x value. So I see that I have a constant in front of my natural number. And what I'm going to do is what we did before was keep the constant always separate so it goes back to the derivative um, properties limit properties what I do when I'm taking the derivative is always separate the constant and then take the derivative of whatever is there so for when taking the derivative of fx I'm gonna keep 3 the same then I'll start taking the derivative of e to the power of um, x squared that's what I'm gonna take the derivative of so now when I do that, I know that previously we said e to the power of gx. When you take the derivative of this, it's going to equal to e to the power of gx. And then multiply by the derivative of that gx. I can do the same thing over here. My gx here is actually x squared. If I take the derivative of gx, it will just give me 2x use power rule and now over here all I need to do is apply this back into here and keep my e the same so I have 3 e to the power of x squared times 2x which I can actually multiply these two together to get 6x e to the power of x squared and that will be my answer now it wants me to determine it when you plug in negative 1 for the x value. So if you do that, I'm going to get 6, negative 1, e to the negative 1 squared. I see that I'm going to get negative 6 over here. And I see that negative 1 times negative 1 will give me positive 1. So e to the power of 1, which you don't need to write. So your answer is negative 6e. So this question says determine the equation of the line tangent to y equals e to the power of x over x squared where my x equals to 2. So because it asks for the tangent, I already know I'm taking the derivative of this function given here. And in order to find the slope of the tangent, I can just um, plug in 2, which is given over here to find the slope at that point. And from there, I can actually get the equation of this line. So I'm going to start with taking the derivative of the function given. So when taking it, to make it easier, I'm going to um, rewrite it as e to the power of x and x to the power of negative 2, which comes to the same thing, and I will be applying the chain rule. So when we apply the chain rule, I know that first I take the derivative of this one, I keep this one the same, and then I, I do plus keep this one the same and then take the derivative of this one so let's try that so first i will be taking the derivative of e to the power of x which i know is the same thing as e to the power of x because it's not a gx it's only x now i keep the second one the same so it stays as x to the power of negative 2 plus now i keep this one the same so write it as it is and take the derivative of the second one, which when I apply the power rule will give me negative 2 
x negative 3 to the power of negative 3 because when I do minus 1 over here it would give me negative 3. Now when I put these together to make it easier on the i, I'm just going to simplify it. So that would give me, here would be negative 2 e to the power of x all over x cubed. Now in order to make the denominator is the same over here, I'm going to multiply this by x, so both of them are x cubed. So if I do that, I'm going to end up with x e to the power of x minus 2 e to the power of x over x cubed. And I realize I can actually take out e to the power of x out of the function. So when I do that, I'm going to end up with x minus 2 all over x cubed. Now that I have my function, all I need to do now is plug in x equals 2, my value, back into here. What I realize is when I plug in 2, I realize on the top it's 2 minus 2, which will just give me 0. So my slope is technically 0. You don't have to do anything after that. It's just 0. So this tells me that my actually my slope is 0 and my tangent will be horizontal. So my equation comes up to be, because the slope is 0, you don't have to put anything like that, my b value would be e to the power of 2 all over 4 when you plug in 2 and that will be your answer. So for this question, the first part is asking me for the function y equals e to the power of negative 3x, determine the derivative, which is represented by dy over dx, this represents the second derivative, which I will be explaining in a bit. And this represents the third derivative by the number 3 and by the number 2. So what do we mean by that? So let's try to take the derivative first, and then we'll start with the second and third derivatives later. So for my section A, I have y equals e to the power of negative 3x. Now I'm going to take the derivative, which is dy over dx. And that will give me, because my gx is negative 3x, when I take the derivative of this gx, it will just be negative 3, because this is x to the power of 1, which would just give me 1. So since I already have my what my derivative is for gx, we keep e to the negative 3x the same, and then we multiply it by negative 3. So technically, my derivative is negative 3 e to the power of negative 3x. Now, when I say the second derivative, what it means by that is take the derivative and take the, this derivative's derivative again. So that's why we call it the second derivative. So basically, it means instead of taking the derivative of this, you take the derivative of this. So two times. When I do that, I keep the constant in front the same. I don't touch that. And I take the derivative of e to the power of negative 3x. When I do that, it's going to become the same thing that I get as a result right over here. Because when I take, what I take the derivative is right over here. And it's the same thing as this part. So my answer is going to be negative 3 and then negative 3e e to the power of negative 3x, which I can multiply these two together to get 9e e to the power of negative 3x. Now, when it says the third derivative, it just means instead of taking the derivative of this, you take the derivative of the second derivative. So that would come to um, d3y all over dx cubed which will give me taking the derivative of this, keep the constant the same, then I have e to the power of negative 3x, which is, the like I said, the same thing as right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. So I have 9 negative 3e to the power of negative 3x, which when I multiply this, I'm going to get um, negative 27e to the power of negative 3x. So those are my three answers. So for the second part, it wants me to, from the pattern that I realized from the part A, it wants me to state d to the power of n y and over dx to the power of n. 
So what it means by that is first I need to realize what pattern was there for part A. I realized that when I take the derivative, I had a negative constant in front, which is a multiple of 3. And I kept my E part the same. Now when I take the second derivative, I realize that negative is gone and it turned into positive, but it's again a multiple of 3. And I keep my E to the power of negative 3x the same. Now when I take this third derivative, I realize my negative is back over here and multiple of 3 again. And I realize that I keep my E function the same. So since the N value right over here represents my second or third derivative, I can say I have negative 1 to the power of N. So that is because when I have N as a value of 1 or 3, or odd numbers, I realize that I get negative in the front. And when it says, let's say, 2, because negative 1 time, times negative 1 will give you a positive, anything multiplied by even number will give me that. So that's my first section. Now, because it's multiples of 3, I'm going to put 3 to the power of n, because I realize when it's 1, which is right up here, I get 3. When it's 2, I get 3 to the power of 2, which will give me 9. And when it's to 3, I get the same thing, 27. And lastly, I will keep my last section the same because it never changes. So negative 3x. So that will be my value for that. So I see that this is a word problem and it wants me to find the number n of bacteria in a culture at time t in hours is represented by this function. And first portion is saying, what is the initial number of bacteria in the culture? So because this represents the number of bacteria and it's probably growing over time, I see that if I say t equals zero is my initial point, then I can find the number of um, bacteria. So when I plug in zero for t, I will get thousand and then 30 plus e to the power of zero which will give me 1. So that's going to be equal to 1,031, which will give me 31,000. So for part B, it wants me to determine the rate of change in the number of bacteria at time t. So as soon as it says rate of change, I know I'm taking the derivative of the function given to me. So first, what I'm going to do to make it easier on me is to simplify it which I'm going to do it by times um, distributing this 1,000 into um, the bracket. So that would give me 30,000 plus 1,000 e to the power of negative t over 30. Now when I take the derivative of nt, I know that any constant will just become 0, so I don't even have to write it. So I am only taking the derivative of this portion right here. So I will keep the constant like we did before and then take the derivative of e to the power of negative t over 30. So now because I know my gx is negative t over 30 for e to the power of gx, now, in order to take the derivative of this, I know I'm multiplying this by um, the derivative of gx. So I will find the derivative of gx. I know this is also written as negative 1 over 30t, which I can take the derivative as this being a constant, keep the constant in front. I know this is t to the power of 1, which just becomes 1, right? So what I'm going to do over here is I have 1,000, keep the e the same, so e to the power of negative t over 30, but times it by negative 1 over 30. Now I can multiply these two together to get the number negative 1,000 over 30, e to the power of negative t over 30. I can cancel the zeros out to get the answer negative 100 over 3 um, e to the power of negative t over 30 and that will be my answer for part b. For part c it wants me to find how fast is the number of bacteria changing when t equals 20. 
because it says how fast is the number changing, I know I'm using this formula I found over here, which is the rate of change. All I need to do is plug in um, 20 for my T value, and I will get my answer, which equals to negative 100 over 3 and e to the power of negative 20 over 30 which is the same thing as saying negative 2 over 3 and it will be easier to plug into your calculator you directly put this into your calculator and you will get the answer of negative 17 bacteria per hour so for part d it wants me to determine the largest number of bacteria in the culture during this interval of 0 to 50 of time so I know my initial value was 31,000, right? And I see that my rate of change is negative, meaning it's decreasing. And when I plugged it in at t equals 20, so as time passed by, how fast my number of bacteria is changing, and I see that it's actually decreasing. So at time 20, it de decreased um, by negative 17. So I know my biggest value will be at the beginning since it's constantly decreasing as the time goes by. So my biggest value would be 31,000, which I already found. If I didn't found uh, what my initial number was, I would have plugged in zero to see what my number is and probably that would be my largest number. In this case, it's 31,000. And the last question is basically saying the same thing I explained. What is happening to the number of bacteria in the culture as time passes by? It is constantly decreasing as time passes by.